Hello my dear Thinksters and uh, welcome to another episode on Solidity Smart Contract Examples. Uh, in today's episode I'll show you uh, an example of a safe remote purchase. This is also one of the examples from the official Solidity documentation. And uh, as usual we'll do it in two parts. Uh, first of all, I'll go through the code and uh, point out some peculiarities, maybe some novelties that we didn't encounter before. I'll explain what they do, why they are here, and uh, what's the proper way of using them. And uh, after we complete this first part, I'll show you a demonstration of how this safe remote purchase example in Solidity actually works. Uh, let's begin. Uh, the standard almost boilerplate code is our Pragma Solidity. Uh, then we have a declaration of uh, the purchase contract and our three uh, state variables. I'll skip that. Uh, just to mention, as always, you have every line of the code uh, explained in detail in the article. So I'll just focus on the things that uh, I think may be beneficial if I explain them orally in addition to what is written in the article. Okay, so for the first time in our uh, Solidity episodes, we have a data structure called enum. Uh, specifically, we have enum state, which is a data structure by which we define the states of our smart contract. Actually, enum data structure can be used to enumerate uh, any uh, other kind of uh, items here we have used it to to enumerate four states namely created locked release and inactive uh, state uh, in this case state can be also addressed by by its index where the first item is always uh, indexed with with a zero it's a zero based indexing uh, index number one is locked, two is release, and three is inactive. It's important to remember that because uh, as we'll go through the demonstration, I'll point out each specific state in which we're in uh, when a specific function gets called. Don't worry about it, I'll explain it uh, when we come to that point, but now I'll just uh, run through the code and show you what we have. Uh, we have a modifier, we covered modifiers in the last episode, so this modifier just uh, uh, checks a condition and if a condition is uh, met, then it uh, allows the function to be executed and the function is uh, put right here on this merge operator. We have uh, four errors declared and, uh, four, uh, and three additional modifiers. The first one is limiting the function to execute when only when it's called by by a buyer. Then one more modifier that allows the function to be executed only when it's called by a seller. And uh, finally, our last modifier is called instate. And this modifier allows a function to be executed only if it's in a particular state. Uh, what this particular state is, we'll see in the code uh, at some later point. But uh, right now, let me show you what else we have in this contract. We have four events. Uh, it's actually one event for uh, each state we enter. So it's uh, the aborted event. It's a purchase confirmed event. Uh, this one is triggered by the buyer. Item received. Uh, is also triggered by the buyer and the seller refunded is an event that is triggered that is triggered by the seller uh, in the constructor first time actually we have a payable constructor meaning to as uh, you should remember that when we execute uh, when we deploy a contract uh, the constructor gets executed and uh, uh, it will set uh, specific variables to to their to state variables. I'm sorry to the specific uh, values. Uh, making a constructor payable means that uh, when we instantiate or deploy a contract, it has to be deployed uh, with a certain 
value and this value represents in our specific case uh, an amount uh, that represents a purchase value so we'll be uh, making a demonstration later but i'll just make a few overview points we'll be making uh, a demonstration with a purchase value of five units of whey and <coughs> i'm sorry and uh, whey i'm sorry and uh, this purchase value uh, has uh, to, in order to deploy the contract the purchase value has to be deposited in twice the amount so our purchase value is in, uh, is five way and in order to deploy the appropriate contract uh, with the appropriate balance on the contract we will have to make a deposit of 10 way so this is exactly what this constructor does uh, first it says the seller as a payable message sender so a message sender address account uh, account address has to be cast into payable this is done in order to uh, to enable payment to a certain uh, address because otherwise addresses are not payable by default to prevent uh, accidental uh, transfer of funds to to an address so every time you want to uh, make an address uh, uh, as a receiver of some funds you have to uh, cast it to payable uh, the value is as i mentioned uh, one half of uh, the deposit so if uh, our deposit was 10 way uh, the purchase value is 10 way divided by 2 and that's 5. here we're making a check uh, if our uh, deposit value is divisible by two if it isn't then it means that uh, our purchase value wasn't uh, multiplied by two when uh, we were setting uh, it uh, to deploy the contract but uh, in every case when we do this correctly we will have our uh, our uh, value our message value with which we instantiate the contract uh, it will be divisible by two however if it's not uh, we will get an error message saying that uh, the value is not even and uh, the contract execution will stop uh, we have uh, several functionalities implemented in uh, in appropriate functions that's the function abort uh, to abort the purchase the execution of uh, the contract explicitly then we have a functionality of confirming the purchase uh, which is uh, which is available only to let me just check uh, in state created and uh, okay here anyone can be a buyer even the seller can be a buyer but uh, it wouldn't make a useful case for a demonstration however a confirm purchase function is available in order to deposit uh, uh, to make a deposit on behalf of uh, of the buyer so if uh, one account is a seller and the seller deposits uh, uh, the double amount of purchase value when the contract gets uh, created the buyer will also have to deposit uh, double the amount of purchase value uh, by uh, calling the confirm confirm purchase uh, function and uh, you can see this by by checking this condition so uh, the message value of uh, the transaction of this uh, function call from the buyer side has to be twice the purchase value okay uh, the next functionality is uh, like a simulation of uh, of confirming the receival of uh, 
of an item. So let's say we are a buyer and uh, when we uh, call this function confirm received, we are actually confirming that uh, this something, let's suppose it's uh, some kind of a package, uh, we are confirming that we got it. It's in our uh, property and now we are actually giving a permission to to the seller to get uh, the purchase value from us and uh, that's why uh, this function confirm received sets the contract in uh, the release state this release actually means uh, release uh, the funds the purchase value and uh, in the last line actually the buyer will transfer this value to to the uh, seller okay uh, and the uh, refund seller functionality or function is available only to the seller in the state release so previously we had to find ourselves or the contract had to find himself in itself in the release state and now when the contract is in the release state uh, the function can execute and it will emit uh, the seller refunded event and finally it will <clears throat> uh, set the contract state to inactive and finally uh, this ah i'm sorry i have to make uh, one correction uh, in this previous function uh, i made an error with this buyer transfer we are actually as a buyer we are taking back our deposit half of our deposit because uh, five units of way must remain on the contract balance available to the seller and uh, the other half of five units away uh, is our deposit available to us so we are actually withdrawing it so i'm making this uh, correction i apologize for this mistake so this line is what uh, makes uh, the deposit come back to the buyer uh, let me see aha uh -huh. i was uh, i interrupted myself here and finally in this last line uh, the seller uh, will get three times uh, the purchase value transferred to its account why three times because <clears throat> the seller made a deposit of uh, two uh, times the purchase value that's 10 uh, way and uh, another five way uh, is from the from the buyer and that's 15 in total okay so uh, i'll make one short uh, overview uh, or an abstract of what i just said in terms of what the smart contract does and uh, then i'll go to the demonstration so the smart contract will accept uh, first of all let me say that the purchase value is five way it can be any amount but for the purpose of our demonstration and my story uh, let's say that the purchase value is five way first of all when the contract gets created by the seller uh, it will be uh, created with 10 units of way this will be the seller's deposit twice the amount uh, twice the purchase value that's 10 way then the the buyer will uh, will also get into the trade by depositing 10 units of way himself currently we have 20 units of way on the contracts balance so this uh, these funds are not neither with the buyer neither with the seller they are on the contracts balance and the contract is behaving like an escrow agreement uh, next the buyer will confirm that uh, he got uh, the order the package or whatever and uh, he will uh, signal the contract he will put the contract into the release state meaning that uh, 
uh, five units of whey will get back to the buyer and 15 units of whey will uh, remain uh, lying on the contract's balance. And now the seller will withdraw his deposit of 10 units of whey and at the same, at the same time the earned amount, of, uh, the earned purchase value of 5 units and that's 15 whey in total. Okay, uh, that's what I wanted to explain about the code and about what the contract does. And now let's get to the demonstration. If there is anything I missed, uh, please consult the article because, as I mentioned, there is virtually every line described on itself. And uh, uh, this overview of the example, which I just did, is just to make it easier for you to read the article and understand what it does in detail. Okay, so first let's compile our contract. I already did so by pressing Ctrl plus S. And now we can enter the demonstration. First of all, let me check this first account and uh, I'll make a deposit of 10 way by deploying the contract. Now that the contract is deployed, you can see that uh, we have 10 way, but uh, due to uh, trailing zeros being uh, hidden in this uh, display, we are only seeing this number one, but actually that's 10 way. And uh, now that uh, our uh, seller created the account and deposited 10 way, we will do the same with the seller. Uh, I'm sorry, with the buyer. So first the seller created the contract and now the buyer will also enter this uh, trade agreement by uh, depositing his 10 units of way. I'm doing this by selecting this other account. Let's suppose this is our uh, uh, buyer. And now the buyer will confirm the purchase. First of all, we just have to set it to 10 way. So this uh, value of 10 way will be sent along with the transaction. And this is why this uh, uh, function call is red because it's payable. Okay, now when I press this button, the balance of our contract will uh, jump to 20 way. The function call was valid and now we have 20 way. And now what will happen as we are still in the role of our buyer, we will call this function confirm received and uh, the contract balance will drop to 15 way and five way will come back to our uh, buyer. First of all, let's just check the current state because I didn't confirm uh, received, I didn't press confirmed received yet. So we should be in state one. And that's state one, meaning locked. This is when I joked in, in the article when I said that they're locked to dance. So they're both Enter, they've both entered the trade and now something has to happen. And what will happen is that the buyer will confirm uh, uh, that it received the package. And when I press this, we will see 15 right here. And here we are. So the seller currently has five way and uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the buyer has five way which he got back, the seller has none at the moment, and the current state is two. And two means release. Now we will get back to, to the seller role by uh, selecting this first account. And now the seller will uh, call the function refund seller as in the real world this would mean okay the buyer got his part now give me back my earnings and uh, my deposit 
and that's done by uh, calling the function refund seller and uh, let me just check once again okay that's okay when i press refund seller uh, the contract balance will drop to zero as it just did and the state should show three which it does and the and the state number three is inactive meaning our smart contract uh, concluded its execution and uh, both parties got what they needed the seller sold his uh, package or service or whatever the buyer got it the buyer confirmed uh, he received the package by calling uh, confirm received and finally the seller also got his earnings and his uh, deposit in amount of two purchase uh, values and that's it that's our uh, safe remote purchase explained and shown how it works let me just check what is this value is five and that's the purchase value of our smart contract because even though it's uh, finished this five is set in the constructor right here and it remained because it only signifies what was actually the purchase value and all the other transactions are uh, done and complete okay my dear fingsters uh, that will be all for today uh, i hope you had a nice and useful time uh, following this video and understanding and uh, that you managed to understand what uh, it does i encourage you to read the article and uh, try this exercise yourself it's uh, very easy uh, i also encourage you to go through the code understand what it does it's really not complicated it's definitely easier than the last one but bit by bit we are getting closer to our final goal and that's uh, an understanding of solidity on a very high and uh, uh, quality level and we're getting there bit by bit uh, i want to thank you for your attention for uh, for you following uh, me and uh, reading my articles and also thank you for uh, for the good grades that you're giving me and uh, until the next time i wish you a uh, prosperous and good time and uh, let me just say bye bye